Hello, this is MathCast with Mr. Burko, and it's time for Chapter 12.4, Creating Escher-Style Tessellations. M.C. Escher was a Dutch artist who was very prolific, and uh, you see here an example of his work. I'm sure you've seen it in a lot of different places. It's a very, uh, it's very popular in, in sort of pop culture. And um, this is his uh, swans. It's kind of interesting because it kind of forms a Möbius strip as well, which is another, another interesting uh, video that we watched earlier on. And um, if you look really carefully at this, you can see that uh, these swans are creating a tessellated pattern in the middle. And obviously the pattern breaks up uh, as it wraps around behind itself. But uh, he's just a brilliant artist and uh, very mathematical and works really well for this particular unit. So what we're going to talk about in this unit is uh, creating tessellations from combinations of regular and irregular polygons and describing the tessellations in terms of the transformation used to create them. So uh, in your textbook, we're on page 462, 462. And there's two Escher drawings here, and uh, the first one here is uh, bird, and it's Escher's bird number 44, actually. And uh, in this particular picture, you see a tessellated bird pattern. He's changed the colors of them, so they stand out a little bit more. Uh, but what transformation is used to create this tessellation? Well, the thing that you need to think about is there's actually a pattern in here that um, a, a polygon in here that you can't really see and the polygon is sort of right that's not the right shape sorry this pattern is right there so if you look really carefully you can see that's that's your polygon right there um, it's kind of a hexagon all right, and uh, it's just just uh, sneaking in there. It's rotated a little bit, so you're gonna rotate it like this, and uh, and so you'd say it's 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 birds, obviously, but uh, inside the birds there's really a repeating pattern. I don't know if you can see that all that well. I can certainly make those lines thicker so that uh, it's a little more apparent. There we go. And uh, I can rotate that a little bit so it fits a little bit better too. I think I've changed the, 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 the hexagon there. Um, and, and so really, it isn't actually a, a hexagon so much as it is a bunch of triangles. So let's make ourselves some triangles. And let's um, create a new one, actually. So turn that into a triangle and uh, it is a bunch of triangles that are rotated to create the pattern like that and Again, another one like that, and you'll start to see your hexagon take shape. And so I can actually take that shape there and kind of duplicate it, and I'll um, mirror it, and I will just put it back there. So that's essentially it. So what uh, has been done with these triangles? Well, they've been rotated to form a hexagon. So the, the rotation can go like that, sorry, or it can go the other way. Um, and you can see that bird, the nose is, the nose is kind of uh, pointing in that direction too. And, uh, and then these brown birds, their nose, it sticks right into the middle of that hexagon. It's pretty fascinating when you think about it in terms of that. Um, the second one that we have is uh, Lion by M.C. Escher, 
And uh, if you look closely, you can see, of course, I think probably you noticed the yellow uh, griffins first. Griffins are a lion and uh, eagle combined. But you, you look also, you can see that there's also the black ones if you change your focus a little bit. And uh, what we have here is a type of polygon as well that has four sides. But, 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 here's the thing. It's a little bit of a trapezoid, I guess you could say. So here we go. We're going to do this. I'm going to mirror it. And I will um, try to show you exactly how this looks. Let's make it thicker. And uh, so this is the opposite of what I want. I want something that's horizontally mirrored. So let's do this like this. OK. And I'm going to rotate it a little bit like that. So you see, uh, this little guy is filling in this irregular polygon, right? And it's repeating like this. There it is again. And so the transformation used to create this tessellation is uh, translations. He's just picked up and moved over horizontally, picked up and moved over horizontally. Whereas our tessellation A was rotations. So the bird was rotated. Uh, and it's like he's a little piece of a triangle. All right, so that has been uh, chapter 12.4. Just a little taste of Escher's art. If you Google Escher, you'll find hundreds, maybe thousands, probably millions of pieces of artwork. He hasn't created millions of pieces of artwork, but of course there's a lot out there and a lot that's been inspired by him. So in this chapter we'll explore some of his, uh, some of his works of art and maybe think about how we can create some of those on our own.